It's John G. Sutton, Tales from the Jails. I'm going to talk today about uh, the infamous armed robber who has just died, John McVicker. They made a film about his life in, the ni- in 1980, actually. It was called McVicker. Many of you may have seen that film in which uh, the, the, the lead singer of The Who, Roger Daltrey, played the uh, the lead, played the part of John McVicker. Uh, he was an armed robber in the 1960s who escaped from jail uh, on uh, two occasions and was once labelled public enemy number one. Uh, I mean, armed robbery is a terrible f- offence. I mean, you break into a premises, a bank or whatever, and stick a shooter or a sawn-off shotgun or whatever it is at people, terrifying them, and then stealing the money, whatever you do. It is not actually a very glamorous thing to do. It's a rather cowardly thing to do, in my opinion, and uh, it doesn't warrant anybody being lauded as a hero, which McVicker saw himself as a hero. And I met him, McVicker, in 1990. We were at uh, Pebble Mill Studios in uh, Birmingham filming uh, a late night chat about prison conditions. And McVicker was there to throw his six penny worth in. He seemed to me to be very opinionated about his own importance seemed rather self-impressed. You know, I like me, who do you like? (laughs) That kind of thing. But basically, he was just a prisoner. But uh, he had gone on to study. He did uh, three A-levels when he was imprisoned in Leicester Jail, uh, HMP Leicester. And uh, he later went on and did a postgraduate uh, degree at Leicester University. I know Leicester University. My grandson is there doing a degree in engineering. So I've been there. But uh, McVicker, yeah, he's just died. He was 82. Apparently died of a heart attack. Whilst he was out walking his dog, he'd alienated himself from his family and uh, was living a solitary solitary life, almost as a recluse. In in the year 2002, I believe it was, he lost a serious libel case against, I think it was Linford Christie. Uh, He'd he'd labelled Linford Christie quite incorrectly as being uh, an athlete that relied on steroids, and of course Linford Christie hadn't, and that he issued proceedings against uh, John McVicker and John McVicker lost that case and uh, I assume that he paid him damages he'd certainly pay his court costs and anything like a libel case has to be heard in the high court so you're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds there serious money uh, I, as I say when I spoke to McVicker in uh, Birmingham at Pebble Mill Studios in Birmingham. Uh, he was very opinionated. Uh, he, w- he wouldn't sit down and talk and have a, have a, a convivial conversation. And uh, it was suggested that we go and have a discussion in the bar afterwards. He said uh, he didn't drink alcohol, he was using a different substance. So what that means, I mean, you can read into that whatever you will. He wasn't a big man. He was probably about five foot seven, five foot eight, slender build, but obviously uh, a very determined individual, but also an out-and-out criminal. And uh, he, he thought prison staff were completely stupid. Seriously. If you watch the film, there's a scene in there where it shows McVicker portrayed by Roger Daltrey. 
testing a rope ladder and getting one of the staff to to test the ropes <laughs> you know make sure it's properly secure and that's what he used to break out of the prison so he was like telling the staff you know poking fun at the staff you know saying look at these stupid bastards they're even helping me prepare my escape route mm. I believe some, I mean, just like every other, every other part of society, you will have people that are particularly astute and you'll have people who are particularly dull. It don't matter whether you're in the police force, the legal profession, or, or, or in the prisons, doesn't matter. I mean, you're going to have people who are very bright, people who are not so bright. But Vicar seemed to be poking fun at the prisons, saying... Look at the jailers, aren't they stupid? And he'd escaped twice, so he had an opinion of himself about that. So there we are. It's wrong to speak ill of the dead. But in the case of public enemy number one, John McVicker, an armed robber who terrorised innocent people with an armed weapon, I'll make that exception and speak ill of that dead. Although he did turn his life around, uh, he wrote a book about uh, the murder of Jill Dando uh, and he claimed that this George somebody or other had done this and then it was subsequently found by a jury that he hadn't done it you know they tried him and he was found not guilty and McVicker issued another book that said somebody else had done it so basically he was just writing for money I think you know bit of a hack journalist which is uh, better than being an armed robber we've got to face that don't you think yeah being a hack journalist yeah anyway it's that time um, it's just a short one today it being a Sunday yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah, it's a song dinger I'm not going to sing so you can relax there but I am gonna read you a poem one of my poems. Got some good reviews from my poem from yesterday. What was it? What did I read yesterday? Flowers yesterday. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for that. Well, listen, if you've got comments about what I'm saying here or my poems or anything like that, you put them in the comments down below. I will respond. You've probably seen that I do respond to all of them. If I possibly can, then I will. So I'm going to read you a poem I wrote uh, about daffodils because I was in the Lake District, which is not far from where I live, actually. And uh, I thought, I went to the house of William Wordsworth, Dove Cottage, yeah, at Grasmere. You should go. It's, it's a very thought-provoking visit. And uh, I thought, well, his most famous poem is Daffodils. You will all be familiar with daffodils, won't you? I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vale and hill, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. There you go. Uh, that's off the top of my head. Uh, so I thought, well, if uh, he can do it, if William Wordsworth can write a famous poem about daffodils, I can do the I can do the same. So I gave it a go, and this is the result. You may think that I've succeeded or failed. Please tell me in the comments below. This is yesterday's daffodil by John G. Sutton. The early April English rain kissed the daffodils again as newly blooming, fresh and bright. They danced in gentle breeze so light, and golden shimmering, glimmering fair, by the lake, the water, stone walls, and there, in old graveyards, full of the silent and still, sleeping like yesterday's daffodil. Life's springtime, we run fast and free, careless, glowing, unaware are we, full of adventure, the dancing youth's thrill. We dance just like the daffodil. Then after April, when May follows, June and soon the summer swallows fly above the woodlands high, 
Chasing dreams across the sky. Deep in the valleys far below, the daffodils no longer show their sun-bright heads to the August day, for they await the coming winter's snow, and then the spring, one April morn, kissed by the dew of an English dawn, the sprightly buds form a golden sea. The daffodils are there, but where are we? Yesterday's Daffodil by John G. Sutton. Thank you very much for watching this channel. Do please like, subscribe and all the rest of it. We will meet again.